Well, good morning, everybody. I uh, thought we'd get out here this morning and get a little bit of work done. I'm just going to bring you guys with me because why not? So yeah, the old 1970 GMC is going to get some new belts before we send it on the road again. Uh, we've already replaced all the hoses and everything. And uh, it's got all new accessories, uh, fuel pump, water pump, starter, alternator, all that good stuff. <clears throat> Shouldn't take but a minute to get these belts off of here. It is such a nice morning out, y'all. I had to dream up an excuse to get out here and do something, so I thought I would do this. Besides, it is something that needs to get done anyway. This would be nice to have this over with. This thing is about to be roadworthy, and I'm just trying to just make sure everything that can go wrong best I can. We just kind of chase all those problems away ahead of time. Well, hell, I think I'm about to get this loosened up. Oh yeah, there we go. I dropped the bowl, but didn't lose the spacer. Okay, there's that one. I'm gonna label which one of these are because they're very close in size. We did some front end work to this one on the last video, in case you missed it. If you're interested, go check it out. It's got all new front end pieces underneath it, tie rod ends, ball joints, all that good stuff. Hey, how'd y'all like that last video? In case you missed it, we actually went through and put all of the chrome and the bumper and everything back on the front of this old 59 Dodge Coronet. Quite the adventure. <laughs> I couldn't remember for the life of me which order all those parts went in, and I kind of had to backtrack a time or two, but we did get it. And it, uh, man, does that not look good? That just looks great. I'm gonna do a little more polishing, and uh, well, now we gotta put the rest of it on. I mean, look at all that. We got a mile of trim to go, y'all. I'll fire it up, put it back over in the shop. In case you've never seen it, this is one of the ones with the push button transmission. go away once it gets driven a little more it just sits around so much that I think over time there it goes just ran out of gas every time so yeah we're missing a little something back here I think maybe we could take care of that today what do you think they didn't give us much room to work but I could just put my fingers up in there to Get the washer and the nut back on there. Just enough. Well, I got it up on there. Uh, I gotta go through and tighten up the bolts before I get too crazy. I wanna come out here and kinda eyeball it and kinda look at the gaps on each side. I mean, we are in the ballpark. Uh, it's kinda funny, it has blue overspray on it even though we took it all apart. Well, that's because, in case you missed it, this car was actually painted I think back in the 80s, and well, that old boy didn't take it apart like we did, I guess. Yeah, we went the extra mile on this one, that's for sure. Took it completely apart. I mean, hell, we had the doors off of it, the hood, the, the trunk lid, everything. See, I think our left to right is actually pretty good on here, but I was noticing the up and down. If you notice, we're kind of tight over here on this side and then over here it appears to be a little bit loose we got a, a little bit of a gap there so uh what i've done is i've just gone through and tightened the bolts up just barely enough that uh, if we were to move it it would stay wherever we move it and then we could tighten it up you see what i'm saying that way it's not flip-flopping all over the place 
Now once we get it into position, should be able to snug it down. That ought to be pretty close. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this side down to match this side and I think we'll be good because that's as high as I can get this side to go. But that side will come down a bit. A couple more bolts under here, tighten up on the bumper and we can move on to the tail lights. I thought it'd be kind of cool to turn them this way, okay, make it to where the chrome part faces up and then the red part faces down, which would kind of reflect off of the bumper there. And then of course the top one's the same exact way. Instead of it facing inward like that, it'll face down too, reflecting off of the chrome off of the bottom light. I don't know, I just thought it'd be kind of cool. And you know what? I thought of that a while back and then I actually turned around and seen another guy do it on Facebook or something, I'm not really sure. And I was like, okay, yeah, now I know it's cool. I'm not the only one out there doing this. Uh, I'm not sure how many people have tried it, but you guys leave me a comment, tell me what do you think. Uh, I'll go ahead and get this done and we'll see what it looks like. Got the holes drilled out, there we go. Let's get that in there. Get a couple of the Nuts started back on there. And we can step back and see what it looks like. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one in and then we'll step back and see what it looks like. It's a little easier to go ahead and put the light in now, I think. Save us from having to reach up inside of there. Uh, let's see, it's got a little notch on it, there we go. Nothing left but to bolt her in. Uh, <laughs> My personal opinion, I think it looks kind of cool. We'll step back, we'll shine them up too. I need to run a little polish on them and then we will uh, step back and look at them. How about that? So there's what they look like from the factory. You see how the lights face outward. Uh, I think I might've said that backwards earlier, but uh, yeah, they face outward like that. And then this is how we're doing them. Uh, I don't know. I think it looks cool like that. Just the way the bezels are shape like that going you know with the long part being coming out over the top you know like it would like a, over a headlight or something uh this is again this is the way it is from the factory and this is how we're doing them now y'all leave me a comment tell me what you think i know some of you guys are going to tell me leave leave it factory i know I think I got all my holes lined up. Yep, we're good. I'll get this one bolted in. We'll get this side shined up like the other side. Well, that's the worst part about leaving masking tape on for way too long. <laughs> and by too long, I mean three years. Oh man, I'm gonna have to get lacquer thinner after that. That's just not even trying to come off. Okay, so that's where we're at so far. I like the tail lights personally, uh, but I do appreciate you guys' opinion. And I'm just kind of curious what you guys think. So be sure to leave me a comment on that. Pretty easy modification to make. Uh, a dozen holes and there we are. Okay, so we've got the bumper on. We've got some taillights in. How about we move on to the fins? Look at this. This right here, I mean, we've been looking at it like that for so long that I completely forgot. I mean, look at this ginormous piece of trim that's got to go on here. I mean, how cool is that? That's going to slip right up on there just like that. It's got a little screw here I'll have to undo and then it goes through there, but look at that. I mean that is a nice piece I forgot all about that. You know you get in and you start digging around and all this stuff And you realize that it's just got all this really cool stuff. I mean look at that That's still got to go on each side and then stuff like this right here This is what's going to cap this off when it's done. I mean look at all it's just chrome stacked on top of chrome stacked on top of more chrome man this is kind of fun really to be honest with you i'm used to working with a bunch of plastic junk that's right a lot of you guys want to see me get back into the flip cars and stuff but man this is so much more fun than messing with the these newer cars everything's built out of plastic and rubber and it's just you get into this stuff and it's just loaded with all kinds of cool the stuff you're not used to I, I mean, I'm not used to dealing with this stuff every day, and it's it's fun to actually bolt a car together versus snapping them together, which is normally what we do. Let's see how this is going to work out. 
I believe it's going to go on first and then we'll snap this piece of trim on afterwards. Switching over to a screwdriver. I don't want to use a drill on any of this. That drill was to get away from me. Oh, I can only imagine what it might do to this paint job. So trying to stay away from the power tools during this stage. Now that I got all the bolts and screws started, we'll come through and tighten them all down. And that piece is installed. Been just kind of going through and shining up the chrome off camera. It's like we did on the last video. She uses some cheap chrome polish. In case I didn't already mention it. Something we got from Walmart. And it seems to be doing just fine. Super inexpensive. And I believe this to be this piece and then the one that went on the outside. And these just click right on. So we don't have to worry about trim screws or any kind of weird nuts and bolts or any of that. And the clips are still there so we don't have to source any of those either. Uh, I taped all of this together to keep it all as one piece, you know. This little piece, these, these are the things most of you can imagine. These little pieces like this are the ones that always come up missing when it comes time to put this stuff back together. So I just taped it all together in a bundle and just tried to keep the pieces together that way. Uh, get all this turned around the right way. Yeah, I believe that's gonna go right there. Now this is where things can get kind of tricky because I need to know which piece to put on first because other pieces overlap this piece, I believe. Uh, you can see where this has, this is stuff you gotta look for. See how this has this little recessed area? Well, that's telling me that another piece of trim is actually gonna overlap this piece. Whereas over here, you might notice it doesn't have that, so this piece is probably going to overlap the other piece. You got to know kind of which which order to put things on. I only want to click these on one time. Yeah, see, it's even got this cap. That cap is going to sit right on top of there. And when it's done, you can see it's got the little recessed areas telling me that this piece of trim is actually going to slide right over the top of that. You see how it works? And I know most of you guys know that, but just in case you're new to this type of thing, it is very important that you pay attention how this goes back together because once, like I said, once these are clicked on, I don't want to be digging in any of this stuff with the trim tool, trying to pop it back, back loose so I could put it the way it's supposed to be and end up gouging my new paint. You know, that's not cool. So this is how I do it. You guys could do it however you want. Uh, the screws, when I took this thing apart, I literally tape the screws back into the respective holes. There's just no way to get it wrong when it comes time to put this thing back together when you do it that way. And I know some of you guys are probably throw these things into a coffee can or something like that and then label it. And that's fine. No, no problem. Do your thing. Uh, I've seen guys that will just take all this stuff and throw it into the floorboard of the car and just hope for the best. <laughs> I don't know how y'all do it. But hey, whatever method works for you, this is what works for me. Maybe you could try it see if it works for you. I mean, it's, it's a foolproof way of keeping track of your screws and putting them back right where they go. And it helps if you don't throw them on the floor when it comes time to need them. But here we go. This is actually going to just slip right over the top of this. I just found a hidden screw I wasn't even aware of. That's gonna come up through the bottom through this hole right here. So this is very well designed. I mean, ain't none of this stuff gonna go anywhere once it's on. Look at that. Throwing screws everywhere. We'll get that one started. Nice. And then we will come over here and start this one, which goes right there. And there'll be another one around on the other side. Once that's in, then we can overlap our next two pieces. Yeah, you see what I mean about how these things, they screw together versus clipping a bunch of plastic pieces together and I like it it's a nice change of pace yeah we're just out here screwing around it's pretty fun it's fall the weather has changed a bit so we are cooled off we have fall like temperatures going 
and I'm loving it. In case you guys don't know, these clips do slide around in the channel. Line them up with the trim holes, and then we'll click it on there. We are just about there. We're very close. I need to adjust this one a little bit and this one, and I think we'll have it. Yeah, something like that. Alright. Something like that. So this next piece needs to slip into this little channel here. Proven to be easier said than done, but oh, I did get it. There we go. And we'll just kind of work our way down through here. Every once in a while I find myself in a position where I need to squeeze these clips together to get them going to the hole. And boy, I sure do got to be careful. This little skinny piece of trim don't cover up much. There, okay, that went in. Yeah, just kind of coercing them back into their holes here, and it seems to be working. And all we got to do is just push them in. Pretty easy. Well, all right, there's another piece installed. Let's see. Oh, okay, we got it. Oh, you see what we did there? We got the top part slid in and the bottom part didn't make it, so that won't look good. We need the top and the bottom to go in. There, see like that? That's the stuff you'll have to watch for. I don't know if the camera picked it up very well, but you got to get it all the way in the channel there or it won't look right when you're done and sometimes you won't even discover it until after you clicked it on and you go back and look and you got a piece sticking out and it don't look good and the only way to fix it is pop the trim back off ask me how I know all this I'm trying to save you guys some of that so we are in I'm gonna go ahead and click this on there it goes all right, not bad. And then, like I said, we'll screw the nut on the inside right here. So, yeah, right here, we're going to screw that little nut on the end of there, and we ought to be good to go. And that piece didn't fight us too bad. Oh, man, I spoke too soon. I got to dig that out now. Yeah, it's down in there somewhere. Good lord. Always something. Some of y'all might be wondering why all these holes are taped shut. Leave me a comment if you know why we taped the holes shut. It's got a bunch of them. And they're all taped shut, but why though? Why? Why is that? Leave me a comment if you know why. I bet some of you guys know why. So on this next piece, what I've done is I've off camera, I went through and slid all of my clips in the channel lined up with the holes that they're going to clip in on the body you see that all the way down all of the clips are lined up and what i'm basing this off of is the edge of this i don't want it to be too far back and i don't want it to hang over the edge too far so that's kind of what we're lining it up with right there at the edge of that and i should be able to click it on so my point here is to make sure that you get it lined up at the edge of that door first. That needs to be your first priority because you don't want to be trying to slide this thing back and forth once it's clicked on. That could prove difficult, sometimes impossible, and you're running a chance of messing up your paint when you do that kind of stuff. So anytime you get to a point where your trim is going to line up with an edge of a door, that's your finished edge on your trim, by the way, unlike this where you have a chopped off piece this is a finished edge obviously that go that's going to go to your your door gap right there and that's what you want to start with make sure you got that right before you click that on now right here we're missing a piece right yeah this is why i taped all of this together could you imagine having something this small just floating around the shop and that's way it would have been had i not taped it to the rest of this as a bundle Everything that involved this fin was all taped into a bundle, including this little piece here, which is going to be the finishing 
crown jewel, I guess, of this whole fin piece. And without it, that looks terrible. Could you imagine? Yeah, don't borrow trouble you ain't got, is all I'm saying. Go through the trouble to save all of these pieces. This piece gets a nut on the back side, just like those other pieces, which is nice. We're not dealing with clips or any of that. Pretty cool. Easy enough. There's that piece. So that leaves us with this piece. This is actually the biggest piece of trim that comes on the whole cars right here. And it barely fit in the trunk. In fact, anytime I would put it in here, it would stick out just a little bit. I'd have to turn it to the side just to make sure it didn't get slammed into that trunk lid. Well, we ain't got to worry about that no more. She's going on the car. It'll no longer be in harm's way. Won't have to worry about slamming it in the lid there. So let's get this shined up and we'll click it on. It goes on the same way the other ones do. So here's the next piece. We actually had a subscriber send us an entire box of clips, which I thought was awesome and very much appreciated. I've already got them in here. I'll show them to you here in just a second. Uh, they're the kind that you actually put the nuts on the back side. Pretty cool. Uh, the way this one's designed is it has two clips up front that snap into the hole because there's no access behind them. And then from here on out where you can actually get on the inside, uh, it's got these clips that I'll show you in a second that you can actually screw the nuts on the back side. So pretty cool. Yeah, so all we got to do is come on the inside here, screw those on, tighten them up. And that piece of trim is done just that easy. Well, there we go. There's another piece on the car. And we only have one more piece to go. It goes right here. But I wanted to show you all these clips. Uh, this was sent to us by a subscriber, y'all. Unbelievable that y'all do these kinds of things. Uh, $109 the total on this. Unreal. I can't even believe you guys do this. So I just wanted to say thank you to Giacomo. I believe that's how you say his name. I hope I didn't butcher that too bad, but he's the old boy that sent us these. Very much appreciated, man. That got us through this. Saved the day on the whole trim deal. Yeah, without those clips, we wouldn't have even have been able to install that bottom piece. That's the longest piece of trim on the whole car, and we wouldn't even have been able to put it on without those clips. So very helpful. I think that the door trim will probably be the same way. We'll probably have to use a bunch of them to continue on down the side here. So uh, I'm glad he sent us a whole box. So here's the final piece going on. Something like that right there, look at that. And just a few turns and they're on there. Go through and wipe all the old fingerprints off. And I believe we could call this quarter panel finished. All right. So you guys give me a few minutes, I'll get all these pieces polished up and we'll get this side finished. We'll pull it outside and check out our handiwork. Well, we got that other tail fin done. Figured we'd just keep right on and going. The emblem's on. Uh, we'll get the Dodge lettering back on. I think that'll be cool. Got a little bit of bad news, unfortunately. We are missing a tiny little trim piece. Can y'all believe it? After all that bragging about how organized we was, and I'll be damned if we ain't missing a piece. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. Very unfortunate. Alrighty, there's that. 
Well, leave it to me to figure out a way to bust my knuckles up putting on delicate trim, but I did. Uh, here's my problem. We lost this little tiny piece. Man, I can't find it nowhere. I've tore the whole trunk apart. Found some door panels. I'm gonna have to do something with those sometime. Uh, found the armrest too. We got all four of them, so. Uh, something good came out of search, searching for that piece, but anyway. Maybe it's worked its way under the carpet. I've already moved the tire out of the way. It's not under there. I've looked down in the little areas down in there. Not there either. Maybe it wasn't there when it got here, but you know what? I do seem to remember this car having all of its trim. Nothing was missing. I even looked down in between the back seat, down underneath that package tray. Nothing. But that doesn't mean it's not somewhere in all of that trim as well. I doubt it, but you never know. So not all hope is lost just yet. If there's anybody watching that has an extra piece floating around, send it my way. All in all, we're not doing too bad, I don't guess. We made it through about a half a mile of trim and we only lost the smallest piece. And if you're gonna lose something, at least lose the smallest piece and we didn't lose none of the big stuff. I'm kind of impressed on how well the side moldings shined up. These big long pieces of chrome that really does set it off. It made all the difference between the two-tone, you know? But uh, some of this, like the bumpers, you may not could even see it on camera. I'll zoom in. Can you see that? It's It's got a little bit of pitting on it, so that kind of stuff is in need of restoration. I mean, hell, you got this deal right here. Look, all the chrome is going off of that. There's only so much we could do on this. So we'll shine it up the best we can, and uh, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with it because, like I say, it, it needs re-chromed would be the best way to do this. In fact, it would be the only way to do this because there ain't no shining that up. But hey, speaking of taillights, don't forget to leave me a comment on what you think about my little taillight modification. In case you missed it earlier in the video, we just turned them like, I don't know, a quarter turn and face these differently so anyway i think it looks awesome thought maybe we'd pull off that 059 dodge for a little bit drag another one into the shop it's been needing a little bit of attention a little foggy out this morning yeah the old fury this is a 72 fury for anybody that's new to the channel might have missed it got a really nice playlist on this old car where we just we drug it out of the woods uh we got it running first so we did a will it run and all that cleaned the tank out did a bunch of stuff to it since then we even fixed that old roof uh that's just spray on bed liner y'all for those of you who don't know and it looks like a final top so it actually worked out the roof was swiss cheese i'm telling you man go watch those videos that had a vinyl roof on it for decades and it just destroyed the sheet metal underneath but somehow we got it straightened out uh anyway i want to bring this into the shop and uh mess around with it a little bit uh i, I got a surprise for y'all apologize you guys my camera's acting a little goofy not sure what's going on here can y'all hear that it wiggles around on its little tripod thing and and yeah it's driving me nuts i hope that doesn't show up in the editing we'll find out but anyway uh check this out i got some pipes for this thing that i'm dying to put on look at these boys they're huge they go fatties look at that uh so those are going on that I have a bit of a fetish when it comes to these exhaust pipes. I like smokestacks, I like side pipes, all that cool stuff. In fact, I'm thinking about changing these to the flappers. Those are my favorite. I just love them. Now, some of you guys already watched me do the pipes on this. We did a full custom exhaust on it, tucked them way up underneath there so you can't see them and they don't drag the ground with it being all low and everything. And, uh, well, a lot of work went, went into it, but unfortunately, when it came to the actual pipe coming out past the mufflers, uh, I didn't get to use what I wanted to because I was running low. And, well, we're going to fix that today because I wanted these big old fatties on there. And the ones that are on there, are they're just too small. But before I do anything, I got an air tire and I got to swap batteries around. Same old story. Kind of the weak spot on the channel is we uh, we have a battery shortage and a uh, we we're in desperate need of tires, man. I need a tires. I I need a hookup for tires. Is what I need. Should we take bets on whether or not this tire will actually take air without having to jack it up? Cross your fingers, man. It's a long ways from here to the shop. Come on now. All right, I know this tank ain't gonna have enough pressure to blow this up on the rim. No way. Hey, there it goes. 
Well, all right. I knew this was going to be a good day, man. I just knew it. Yeah, it's a long ways back to the shop, but we got to go get more air for this. It only had enough to do one tire at a time. Hey, did I show y'all these? This is from scrapping the other day. Look at all these windows, man. We got 15 windows in total, and these are going to go from a greenhouse. A construction crew in town gave me those. They're remodeling the old Johnny Carino's Italian restaurant. And uh, they gave me all those windows. I couldn't believe it. It was awesome. Look at these. I don't even know if I showed y'all these. These are the storefront doors to one of the Halloween stores that they're putting in town right now. Halloween's just around the corner. So, you know, those little Halloween stores pop up. And that's the, the doors right off the front of the store that they gave me. And they are heavy, man. They're like 100 pounds a piece. That glass is thick. And well, that's going on my greenhouse too. The stuff they throw away just blows my mind. Very useful stuff. And they just let me have it. It's either that or it's going to go into the landfill. So, believe me, I could definitely make good use of all of it. Alright, last one. The back ones are good. So, we'll get this one aired up. Throw a battery in it. I'm sure i got to put gas in it too. It is a Mopar. Seems to be a Mopar thing. Everything, every time I try to work, work on either one of these Mopars, I end up having to put gas in it every time, and they just about always run out of gas right in the middle of what I'm doing. And it don't matter how much I put in it either. It could be a few gallons, it could be ten gallons. I don't know where it's all going. Let's go chase down a battery. Hey man, I had a few of you guys ask me to make an Amazon wish list. I don't even know what the hell that is or how to go about doing it either. I'm really bad at all this technology stuff. It's amazing that I've managed to have a YouTube channel to be honest, but um, hey man, here goes. I'll just tell you what we need around here if you're interested. I've had a few people ask. Uh, we need a floor jack in the worst way. My boy came and uh, took his back. After all I've done for him, giving him life and such, he took that jack. He sure did, he took that jack right back. Uh, also, I tell you what, in the worst way, we need camera lenses. Uh, I have a Hero Black 9 GoPro. Uh, I have, I think it's a GoPro 7 or 8 lens taped to the front of this damn thing, y'all. That's what we're working with, man. Talk about roughing it. Uh, these have, inner, you know, lenses that you could take off and replace. And, uh, well, we need a few of them. I'm always ruining these lenses welding and grinding and all that stuff we go this gopro takes a beating but anyway that's basically what we need those two things we'd be good i've had a few people ask about darlene that's our 1994 nissan hard body this belongs to my daughter kayla and uh, some of y'all were asking about how it's doing well it's sitting around waiting for kayla to get back it looks like we stuck some kind of weird camper or sideboards on it huh i got those from down at the local feeling station uh, they was doing some remodeling and look what they gave me. I mean, look at this. These are brand new full sheets of aluminum. I don't know what I'm going to use them for, but I'm definitely going to use them for something. But yeah, anyway, this, uh, this old truck's waiting for her to get back. She is out of town working out of state. She's on a wind farm off out in Missouri somewhere. And uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit before she gets back. But when she does get back, she's going to have the funds to really take this truck to the next level so don't think she's forgot about y'all she sure hasn't she's just working really hard to make some things happen she's making moves y'all and i couldn't be more proud of her holy crap what in the world and i'm more i'm going around here to ask it for new tires <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and blame that on my boy he likes to pull his work truck up right there and i guarantee you, he kicked that right out the door you know the boy that took the floor jack yeah, here I go, robbing the battery out of my daily driver. Let's see if she's gonna start. Yeah, she'll start. I think we gotta lift the ticket on this one too. We really need to start driving these things. It'll limber them up and that kind of stuff usually just go away. Yeah, between swapping out car batteries, aired up tires, 
refilling them with gas and did i mention transmission fluid this one's got a pan gasket leak something fierce i'm not really sure what's going on i've already put a brand new pan gasket on it new filter fluid everything and i'll be damned if it doesn't just sit here and leak it all out so that's something we're going to have to address as well had the same problem with that truck i went through and changed everything and it still leaked all the fluid out and it turned out it was that little thing that goes inside of the on the side of the transmission that the speedometer cable plugs into so i replaced that and fixed that one because i was having the same exact issue with that every time i wanted to move it around i had to spend ten dollars on fuel and and transmission fluid and yeah pain in the butt luckily with this one though it actually has a brand new set of tires on it so no tire issues just everything else <laughs> but we've been working really hard on that one to get it going so all those little things have been getting chased out of it that ought to do it there <laughs> it took about a gallon yeah we got us another pan gasket for it so i'll slip that on there with some gasket sealer and maybe we'll give the pan a little more attention i did the thing with the hammer where you tap down the the high spots and it didn't do any good so we'll try it again now So I'm just going to cut this section off right here. It's about, I don't know, three feet long. Uh, this is, I believe, two inch pipe. And all we're doing is we're going to replace it with some three inch, which I think is going to give it a little more of a growl. It's going to sound mean. I'll promise you that. Oh, golly, sorry about that. I didn't mean to smack you around. Do a little side by side comparison here. Obviously, this is the old one, and then here's the new one going in. Ought to give us a little different sound. Well, hell, y'all then went off and ran out of shielding gas. That's these bottles here. Uh, without that, I can't weld. Well, hey, y'all, rather than hold the video up while I run around town trying to buy stuff, buy materials and what have you, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the video out. I'm tired of holding you guys up. So uh, just know that when we come back, that part will be done. And uh, we're going to actually get to hear what it sounds like. I don't know if you noticed when I was backing it in, it does have some exhaust leaks. That is because I still have to remove that entire exhaust system and finish weld it. We tucked it up underneath there so that we could slam the car down later and uh, not have my exhaust drag in the ground. So to weld the tops of those pipes, I got to actually remove the exhaust system. So every joint on that exhaust system has about an inch or so at the top of the pipe that's not welded yet. So we got to do all that. I can't do that until I get the shielding gas for the welder. So we'll do all of that on the next one. I do appreciate you guys watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Please like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. And hey, while you're at it, go check and make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube will unsubscribe you can believe that uh, be sure and join me over on Facebook follow me over there and you will always get a notification anytime I put a video out that way we don't have to rely on YouTube to do it because they don't do it sometimes yeah I don't know what the deal is with all that but you know what we know how to get around it so shoot on over the old weird beard Facebook and uh, you will always get a notification when I put a video out so anyway I'm gonna get on out of here for now thank y'all for joining me I'll see you later